Hello everyone. Let's make sure we are alive. There we go. I just saw myself pop up there. It is six o'clock. All my lights just came on. So come in, say hi, let me know that you're watching. Hello, Frida. So good, I am live. Live. I don't always know until I see the first person pop in here, and that was Miss Frida. So I hope you guys had a great weekend. I worked at the um, local VFW here. I worked um, on Sunday. So that's kind of fun to get myself out of the house and just see adults since I'm around kids most of the time. Um, I actually, I have, I just realized this right before I went live because um, I was just talking to one of our members there at the VFW. I was just talking to them about, uh, this is my 10th year living here in Arizona. And you know what is really crazy is I just realized it's my 10 year. We moved here in October of 2012. And so uh, I just put two and two together that it's October 22, 2022. And uh, hello, mom. And uh, it was kind of crazy because I was, I was just explaining to them that this is the first year that I have actually felt the change in the weather. Like I literally felt fall um, coming upon us. Like the in the mornings when I get up and I go feed all the animals, I can feel that crisp dewy air. Um, I was sitting out talking with my neighbor the other night. It was like one o'clock in the morning because I was having some technical difficulties with my computer. All of a sudden, all of my Google accounts logged me out and then it wouldn't let me log back in and I was literally losing my mind <laughs> because all of my PDFs and everything are over, over on my Google Drive. So I thought, oh my gosh, this cannot be happening right now. So I went over, I met outside with the neighbor and uh, she was at a loss. She was like, you're going to have to just call Google and find out what is going on. So uh, as we were sitting out there, I could feel the moisture in the air from it getting cooler at night now. Hello, Patty. And so um, when I came in, I had to kind of wipe my computer off because it was moist as well. Um, but it, it was just so nuts that, that was the f this is the first year that I've actually felt the difference in the weather. And then it just happens to be our 10th year living here as well. So it's my 10th year anniversary of living in Tucson, Arizona. Um, so that was just kind of one of those things that I had to tell you. How is the weather where you guys are? Because I know a lot of you guys watch me from other places um, in the country, sometimes even other uh other countries you watch me from. Um, are you feeling the fall weather? Now, I know some of you who live down in like the Florida area, you guys just went through a huge hurricane crazy. And I know that went up through um, the Northern states and that kind of stuff. And I hope you are all safe. I hope your homes, you know, endured that kind of weather. I do always say a little prayer for you guys because I've always told you guys, there's no way I could live on the East coast because a, I can't handle bugs. And yes, I live in Tucson, Arizona, and we do have bugs here, but not like crazy bugs that you have. And mine is a lot like yours. And I can't handle the humidity. But even more than that is the ridiculous, crazy weather you have. So when I was younger and I grew up in um, Southern California, well, that's where I was born. I lived there until I was about 10 years old. And then that's when we moved to Oregon. But uh, when I was younger, I remember earthquakes. Earthquakes were a huge thing in California. And you get kind of used to those. So I don't know if it's something that since you, if any of you guys live on the East Coast, if it's something that you just get used to, do you get used to that weather? You must because you don't move. <laughs> so maybe you just know how to hunker down. And I'm pretty sure probably a lot of you have... Um, what do they call those cellars or something where you go down and you hunker down in those. So hello, Miss Rhea. He hello, Yvonne. So yeah, just, you know, one of those crazy things. So, um, just thought I would mention that to you. 
and it looks like Miss Frida, you guys are at 75 degrees there in Beaverton, Oregon. Woohoo! That's perfect weather. We still have our air conditioning going all day long. Um, at night, uh, around this time, we are able to open up our doors and let the fresh air come in because I love the fresh air. Um, engulfing my home and letting you know that stagnant air conditioning air just kind of blow out but if it's uh starting to get dark which it is getting dark earlier um we have the problem with these little gnats and because we have had so much rain this year we have mosquitoes like crazy and i don't do mosquitoes they drive me nuts i don't know what it is I know I've always been told that it's my California blood that's in me, why they like to eat me alive, but they do. They, I will wind up getting covered in mosquito bites. I have to go outside with pants on once the sun goes away. Um, so it's just kind of one of those things that if we leave the doors open, the mosquitoes are small enough, and same with those little gnats, they're small enough that they can make it through the screen doors. And I just, I can't do it. <laughs> so I quickly let the fresh air come in for a couple of hours and then turn the lights kind of dim. We have some of those smart light bulb things. So I'll turn those all to yellow because that's what we have out on our, our patio. That yellow lights uh, kind of dis distract the, or um, don't let the bugs come to it or something like that. I don't know. So I'll flip our lights to yellow and hope that they don't come in as much. Hello, Jamie. Hello, Sheila. So yeah, um, this month, um, here in Halloween month, I call it, uh, it is my favorite month. Uh, well, I guess the three months, holiday months, I will call them. We've got um, October, November, and December are my favorite months. Love this time of year. Um, we, Stampin' Up! has done some amazing promotions for this month, and when I flip you guys around, I'm going to to tell you guys about them um they start tomorrow so uh it's been kind of a hush hush secret i know other you've probably seen them from other demonstrators and whatnot i hate having to turn on the car lights these days when i go to work I actually wear a light jacket yeah right because it's it's just the way it is hold on what was the rest of your it won't show me the rest oh it's supposed to be 82 well we are in I think it got to, like, like we're still in the 90s. Um, now, at night, it gets down to around the 60s. I know the other night it was supposed to dip, like, fifth, or to, like 59 or something. And I was telling you guys a couple weeks ago that my neighbor's, she has a potbelly pig, and it just had babies. So because it's gotten so cold at night, she has to put a heat lamp out there on those little babies. And oh my gosh, she just sent me pictures of those little pigs. Holy guacamole. They are the cutest darn things I've ever seen in my life. They are so itty bitty tiny little guys. They're just adorable. There's one that is the runt and he is so much smaller than the rest. And just the cutest little thing I've ever seen. Hello, Cheryl. Yes, I know it is my favorite. And then that's what I always say. Pumpkin spice season is the best. Oh, so let me tell you about pumpkin spice. So this morning, since you guys all know that my daughter's on that ketogenic diet and we're trying to eat healthier too, since we just went to the doctor, me and my husband both had our annual physicals and uh, we both know that our weight has kind of gone up. And so we need to get back on a healthier track and uh, I am extremely iron deficient. So there's a couple of options that I have to do. But anyways, um, back to the ketogenic diet that my daughter is on. I made some, they're called chalafels. And you can make them an array of different flavorings and that kind of stuff. But I made her pumpkin spice chalafels this morning. And we had to split them because they were so heavenly. They were so stinking good that I just, I couldn't help to... Because the recipe said that it was going to make two of these chalafels, but it actually made three of them. So I ate one and she got two of them. <laughs> so I at least got my fulfillment. See, I just had uh, a mosquito bite me as we speak right now because I now am getting a welt on my leg. Oh, darn, it's going to itch. Ah. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Absolutely. Oh, and it's so funny because they, um, the other day I had to help them carry over 
he built a little shed so he could put the heat lamp in there so uh, the pigs can go in there um, to stay warm because it's been raining a lot down here. And uh, when he couldn't get it over the fence and my son was still asleep and my husband was at work. So I went over there and I helped him. There's like a gnat or something flying in my face. Um, I went over and I helped him put it in there. So that's so funny because they now have this little, 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 like little hut thing. So it's really cute. All right, so I'm gonna get you guys flipped around here and we are gonna talk about these amazing promotions that you guys are going to want to definitely um, take part in. So hold on, let me get you guys flipped around. So you know what, you guys? I lost my desk. Um, oh, there it is right there. Oh, I see it. I was looking for it. So I took part in, we are having with my uh, team, I took part in doing one of the classes that I did a class about uh, training. Um, I actually got to talk in it and I was a part of it that uh, for a Facebook Live. So if you are a part of my team, you guys will get to see me talking about doing Facebook Lives if you have joined our business Palooza. Um, so that was really kind of fun. It was, yeah, I mean, I was so stinking nervous, even though I do this, God knows, all the time. I was so nervous to have to do like a training class on it, but it actually went quite smooth. I, I was pretty impressed. Um, but uh, when we were talking about it, I was telling her that I have a a little uh, label that I put up here and it kind of shows because I always forget to say my name and I forget to, you know, say my business name. And this way it's kind of right there. You don't have to worry about forgetting things, but I couldn't find it. It it was lost the whole time. The, I mean, and we were on like this conference call. Um, we did a Zoom meeting and uh I was on it for probably like three or four hours just, you know, chatting it up and whatnot. Um, the actual business portion of it was maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But, of course, I get talking and you guys know how I am. So, uh, but I looked the, the whole time and there it was. It was tucked way back behind there. I was searching all back here. Just crazy. So, okay, the current paper pumpkin that is in rotation right now, this is going to end October 10th. So this is going to be a great kit for getting started with your Christmas cards. This is going to make nine Christmas cards, three each of three designs. It's also going to coordinate with next month. So November's paper pumpkin um, kit. So you're going to probably want to get the next couple of months of kits. So if you are subscribed to it, um, I've told you guys before that you can stop your subscriptions at any time during the month. And if that's not a kit that you want... But if you've done that, you're going to definitely want to get your hands on this one and the next month's. And there's going to be a couple little add-ons that uh, you can purchase as well. There's some little North Pole sacks that uh, are going to be probably, I'm not sure what they're, they're shaped like or whatever, but it sounds like those are going to be really cute. They could be great for little gift cards and that kind of stuff. And uh, hopefully they have some kind of little hook maybe on them that we can hang them on the Christmas tree. So that's always kind of fun. So definitely check this out. The link is in the description of this video. Okay, so tomorrow, you guys, all day long, um, there is going to, so it's, this is going to run for 24 hours only. So at 11.59 on October, 59, uh, October 4th, at 11.59, it's done. And that's Mountain Standard Time. You are going to get free shipping on, oh, see you guys, I didn't even put the, correct host code on that because I couldn't find it. Um, so all day tomorrow, one day only, you're going to get free shipping on all of your items. So 
do not let this pass you by. It is a great time to um, get any of those kits that you've been looking at. There's actually a new kit in the store. I believe it starts tomorrow as well. It's the birthday uh, organization kit. Um, also, uh, get your hands on all of your items that you need to make all of your holiday cards. Um, also, those little treat boxes that you possibly give away on um, Halloween or, and uh, those autumn fall cards that you want to make. Get your hands on this stuff while it's free shipping because God knows shipping is going up constantly. And so when you don't have to pay for that, that's more items that you can add to your cart, right? Um, so that being said, you will go to my store at www.shopdannygarola.com. I have posted here in my Facebook business page and over in the uh, description of this video, I have put my new October uh, host code in there. So if your order is under $150, please use my host code. That helps me immensely to be able to um, bring free gifts and do giveaways and all that kind of stuff during the months. And the other thing that is super, super exciting starting tomorrow, see these little gnats? They're everywhere. Um, starting tomorrow, if you are a just beginning stamper, crafter, whatnot, and you really have just been looking at so many things and you're frustrated because it just is too much and you just can't do it right now because the holidays are coming up, do the starter kit. This is the starter kit plus. Again, it starts tomorrow, so don't do it tonight. Start tomorrow, join my team, and you are going to get an extra $30 worth of product added into your starter kit. So normally, you get to pick $125 worth of product and pay $99 for it. Through the month of October, starting tomorrow through the 31st, you get to pick $155 worth of product your choice, whatever you want to add to that cart, as long as you can find it in the store. So any of our current catalogs, even that clearance rack, you can't go over $155. So get as close as possible. You're still only going to pay $99 for that starter kit. So if you're not interested in running a building, a business, we don't care. Just get your hands on this product. Join the team. See how much fun we have join in our uh, monthly meetings. Um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. You're going to find um, that you're going to meet people and have friends that you never knew were out there. So really check this out. If you have any questions, please email me, message me here on Facebook. Um, you can email me at stampinthepinkbarn at gmail.com for any questions on that. I am also selling my uh, 20 cards for $25 plus shipping. Um, this is going to be all occasion cards. So it won't be all Christmas cards. It won't be all Celebrate You cards. It's going to be all different kinds of cards in here. Um, and and they're, they're amazing cards, let me tell you. I've put a lot of work in these cards. Uh, and this way, it can I can start destashing some of the millions of cards that I have. And then you guys get cards that you don't have to worry about making right now. And you can get those sent off in the mail for whatever occasion that you need those for. And again, you'll find all that here in the description of this video. Also, when I'm done here, um, it'll probably take me a couple of hours because my internet is not the greatest out here. But I'm, I'm going to say to be on the safe side, check back tomorrow morning over on my blog, stampinthepinkbarn.com. You will find my blog and there will be a blog post for all the cards that we make tonight. There's going to be a PDF that you can um, download and it will tell you how to uh, make the cards and there's a shopping list attached right to that. So you can find all the products that I'm using for tonight's cards as well. All right, so I have received a couple of cards in the mail. I really wanna show you guys these cards because I love it when you guys send me cards and then I can show everybody in Facebook land. Um, this is, we just celebrated our 17th um, wedding anniversary. So one of my uh, team members has sent me this beautiful, I absolutely love this layout of this card, especially with these little thin, um, 
strips here it just kind of really makes all this paper kind of really pop and just brings it all together now this is from Anna Rebadu she sent this to me for our anniversary so thank you so much Anna also Miss Rhea Jones sent me this amazing little stand-up card isn't that so cute how that just could be displayed on a mantle or a bookshelf or my desk um, this she sent this to me thanking me for um, the make it Monday because she won again these are all things that you can be part of when you join my team make it Monday is a challenge that I do on our team page that um, I will post a challenge every month of a either a theme card or a certain layout or whatever and then all the team members will come in there they will post a picture of their card and then I draw a winner the winner will normally win a it's either an embellishment or a ribbon or something like that along with a full stamp set so that's amazing all you have to do is join the team so this is the card that she was thanking me for because she was last month's winner so awesome so I love that. And Miss Rhea, I know you're on here, or at least I saw you on here. Um, I need to get some dimensions from you, my friend, because I want to make one of these. All right, let's do uh, the winners of, I wasn't on last week because my internet was just not working for nothing. Um, I was really having issues um, with getting anything done. So the winners that I'm going to do are the cards that I'm going to um, do the giveaway for were from the following week all right so the first card that we made was this best witches card with this super cute little witch and of course I got inspired because hocus pocus 2 was coming out and I was like oh my gosh I have to do a cute little witch card for you guys so this is going to go to miss Frida all sap so that will be in the mail coming to you Frida card number two was using we're actually going to use this tonight on a couple of cards um, or actually no on one of the cards that we're making tonight um, this is using the this is called the cottage wreath and I used the paper which is the lights aglow this paper is amazing you guys Again, remember free shipping tomorrow. Um, and then I did some gold embossing um, on that card to really make that pop. This is going to go. Now, this card went to Frida for liking last week's video. This one is going for commenting on the last week's video. This is going to go to Nancy Basham Olson. Um, I know I do not have your address, so Miss Nancy, I need you to message me your address so I can get this in the mail to you. So this is a cute little Merry Christmas card here. Okay, and then this one is using that Peaceful Deer. Again, using that same paper that is the Lights Aglow, and I did the gold embossing on that now for sharing last week's video and there's the matching envelope that goes with that um, this is gonna go to Peggy Frost Brandon oh and look Peggy just hopped on here so miss Peggy this card is gonna come in the mail to you my dear all right congratulations all you guys and so remember in order to get in the drawing for the cards that I'm going to make tonight, you need to comment on this, like the video, and those who share will also get um, the last card that I make is normally a like more amped up card. And that's why I give that away to the person who shares this. So uh, if you enter all three times by doing liking, sharing, commenting, you get entered three times in all of those drawings. So just to let you know that. Oh, I have to show you guys. One of my uh, team members made me this super adorable little bracelet. I And she's totally into making jewelry. But she gave this to me. And look what is on there. Guys, my favorite. Candy corns. <laughs> right? Look at all of these little candy corns on here. That is just so me. 
Oh, I love it. And then it's got, of course, that little skull on there. So this will be worn all Halloween month, October. I also have my uh, zombie t-shirt on because, um, of course, I have to wear, every time I go somewhere in the month of October, I have to wear a Halloween shirt because that's just my jam. Um, again, do not pay attention to uh, the man behind the curtain. No, just kidding. Um, do not pay attention to this host code. This host code is September's. Um, you will find October's in the description of this video. All right. Let's get into some of these cards because I know that's what you really came here for. Okay, I'm going to use the Cottage Wreath um, bundle. I am also going to use the paper that uh, goes with this, coordinates with this. This is the Gingham Cottage Designer Series paper. This is amazing Gingham paper. It comes in so many arrays of colors. Look at all of this that you... You can see right here all the colors that it goes with. So this is a great pack, and it is a huge pack, I might say. I think there is 48 sheets. Yeah, 48 sheets of 12 by 12 paper. So ginormica. This paper will last you forever. You've got great colors for doing Christmas cards. You've got all these amazing colors for doing Halloween cards. You've even got some of these pale pinks and grays for doing birthday cards. Even some of these reds and the grays and stuff are great for masculine cards as well. So they've got you covered in this bundle or uh, in this DSP. Okay, so we are going to be, oh, I didn't even show you the one that we're going to be using today. Ugh. Hold on, I just lost it. Went down, down deep in that paper. Ugh. There we go. All right, now I got it. We're going to be using this. So this will kind of give you the idea of the theme that I'm going with. I'm going to be using the orange and black gingham uh, paper here. Oh, speaking of my mom being on here, I know I just saw her pop on earlier. She is watching us um, or probably just listening at this point. My mom went in this morning and had her um, cataract surgery on one of her eyes. And then she has to go back. I think she said like three or six weeks or something and have the other eye done. Um, so... She had called me this morning. She had to go in early and I guess the surgery took like all of but maybe uh, I think she said like 15 minutes or something and she was in and out just that quick and she is doing well. She went home and she slept for a little bit and uh, she said she's feeling actually quite well for having something like that done to her eye. Um, she does have to put eye drops in. Um, when she goes to sleep and then she has to put a covering over her eye to keep it from because um, they said that normally when you're sleeping you'll reach up and you'll try to rub your eye so she has to have this like patch thing that goes over it oh one thing that I didn't mention that I knew that I was gonna forget I even have a note right up here and I even forgot then do you guys have a birthday in the month of October or November December whatever any month if you guys join my private group which is um, st uh, pink barn stampers group uh, in the the featured part of that group you will see um, a graphic up there that says hey when's your birthday or something like something about birthday pop your birthday in there you don't have to say the year or anything like that just give me your month and your uh, day and we love to do shout outs to you guys over on that group everybody will tell you happy birthday it's just kind of a special little thing that I do for my viewers so I just wanted to let you guys know that because I don't have anybody that um, has put in there that their birthdays in the month of October so if your birthday is coming up let me know oh thank you so much Cheryl you're awesome for doing that that is so cool of you okay so we are using the cottage wreath let me get out my pieces i do want to kind of let you guys know that i decided to if you guys watched my alternatives for the paper pumpkin or if you have the sweet treats paper pumpkin i'm actually going to use this happy halloween stamp for uh this card that i'm going to make today okay this year is the big one for me. 60 in December. Woohoo! Sheila, if you are not a part of that group, go over there and tell me the day in December that your birthday is so we can make sure that we give you a big shout out for your special day. Okay, so 
My card base is eight and a half by five and a half. This is basic black. We are just gonna fold that in half and burnish that. Then we need, I am going to bring in a scrap piece of black. Also, here is a little scrap. I think this is, it doesn't really matter the size. I just cut it because I knew it was gonna fit my little wreath that I was cutting. This is two and three quarters by two and three quarters. This is that gingham paper that I was talking about, that black and orange. My next layer that I need that's going to go on the front of my card is this black layer. This is, um, oh geez, if I can always turn this ruler around, I swear. This is three and three quarters by, I believe, four and three quarters. Yep. Okay, that is actually going to go right on our card, just like that. We need a white little piece. This is one and a half by three and a half yep that is going to go right like that and of course sticking with my good old candy corn feature this is where I'm getting this um, I'm also using paper or uh, pumpkin pie in that same exact size so one and a half by three and a half and a piece of daffodil in one and a half by three and a half. So we're just gonna adhere those right on there. And then my daffodil towards the bottom. Okay, just like that. Oh, I know, I love it, right? That was, it kind of, I was looking at this card, that witch card that we made a couple weeks ago, and I just loved it so much that I was like, okay, I'm sticking with my candy corns. And because I do love my candy corns. Okay. This is going to go directly on here, so you're really not even going to see that black layer. It was more or less just to hold your pieces in place. We need this black scrap right here. I'm going to be taking... Now, there are two different kinds of um, wreaths in here, and then you have your whole wreath, and then one that does more of that twiggy um, stamp right here. Woo! I just threw my ruler on the ground. This right here, that goes in here. And then this one here goes in this big one. And then you've got these little open ones. So I'm going to use the top one up here, the more open one. And I am going to cut that with my black, just like that. There it is. Look at that, the magic of television. And then again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use that same wreath on that black an orange gingham and voila there's that and this really this paper really does a great job on these wreaths giving it kind of a little different look to it so I'm just going to look at this wreath and see where these two big um, uh, leaf kind of pieces are and then I'm gonna find the two big leaves on this and I'm just gonna flip it opposite so those are gonna be up there and I'm gonna put these two down here. But the way I'm going to glue this on here is on that inner ring, I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue, just, you know, ever so slightly. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to put that with those two big ones towards the bottom, kind of keeping the ring together now it's not gonna line up perfect and that's okay. We, we can see the black behind that wreath. 
but then you still get a hint of that orange and black as well. Kind of like that. Hello, Linda. Okay, but first, before we adhere this on here, I'm going to grab a piece of scrap and I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. And I'm going to grab my Stampin' Right. And I'm going to kind of turn this at an angle. And I'm going to flick. Just like that. Okay. Forgot to grab myself a scrap of white, but we need a scrap. So let me grab a scrap here. Okay, this will work. Here's a scrap piece of white. We are also going to need a little strip of black because we're going to do some embossing on that. All right, so this piece is good. I now, let me pull my picture up here. Okay, then what I want to do on my scrap piece is I just had it sitting here. What did I do with it? Did you guys see what it, oh, there it is, right there. I need this. This is part of that four pack of the washi. And I'm also going to be using my witch builder hat. And I am just going to be laying right here on this black piece just a couple of little runs of this. like that just to give it some shimmer and I'm going to punch out those stars okay so there's three stars with that shimmer on there and I'm going to do it again but I need to go up here and add some more washi just like that. I'm going to move these little stars up here so I don't wind up knocking them off this paper. Now that wasn't very smart because I did it. Where are my scissors? Didn't give myself enough space to be able to cut those out of there. There we go. Okay. Find those little stars. Keep those all up there. All right. Okay. This little white scrap that we're going to need, I'm going to take my stays on because I really want a crisp look. And I'm going to use the spider from the cottage wreath right up here, this little spider. See how crisp and dark that is when you stamp it in the stays on? And then I'm going to grab the little, um, where does it go? Right there. There's a little spider um, die right there. So when I cut that out, I have my little spider right here. Okay. So now we can start messing with this. Well, actually, let's do the sentiment on there. So this is where I'm going to use the, um, where did I put it? 
that Happy Halloween. Absolutely, you definitely need to use the washi with some of your um, punches because it really gives a beautiful glittery look if you don't have the um, a, a, a color of glitter paper that you need, but you got it in this. And it's just easy. It's thin. You're not having to worry about much. Okay, so let me get this mounted. Hello, Miss Melanie. I am doing great, my friend. How are you? Okay, so let me grab my Versamark. I'm going to move my little spider up there, too. I almost forgot. I need to rub the... Um, embossing buddy across this okay, just like that make sure we cover that before we open up our embossing powder and I'm using the white embossing powder now our embossing powder comes in packs of three. There's the basics and there's the metallics. The basics come with black, white, and clear. And then the metallic comes with, I believe it's copper, silver, and gold. Okay, let's cover this up. And then I'm gonna grab my heat tool over here if I don't knock everything over. Oh, and of course, it's all entwined in all the cords back there. And once I see it start turning um, shiny and losing that powder look, I'm going to get off of it because if you... Um, overheat it it starts to get kind of a weird texture to it i actually just had one of my customers um ask about that same exact thing she was doing some uh embossing and when she went to look at it after she had done it it had this really weird peely look to it so i hope that that helped when her and i discussed trying it with um not holding heat on it for so long Okay, so let's put all of our little pieces. Let's go ahead and glue this down to the center of our card. Helps if I turn it the correct way. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to put this on here hello Margo okay this is gonna go just right over here push that down okay this little happy Halloween is gonna go right like that so I'm gonna cut this down just a little bit shorter well welcome Margo I hope you learn lots here there's so much fun when it comes to card making there's always so many ideas and definitely watch and learn from so many people because so many people have so many different techniques that um, it's just kind of one of those things that we all are here to teach. Okay. And so I'm going to add that right like that. Okay. Then my little spider. 
I have to decide where I want my spider. Oh, come on, thing. I think I might want to do my spider kind of like he's hanging off of this. So I'm just going to put a little dimensional on the back of that. And hang it like he's hanging right off this that little tag. Okay. Then I'm going to grab my little stars. Oh, my stars. Okay, let's grab all these. Okay, and I'm just going to add some of these stars all around here. Just placing a little dot of glue. Oh, it's a gnat. Oh my goodness. What a pest. Oops. Well, come on now. Did you just see him fly by? He is relentless. I tell you what, I think he's going na 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 na. I could totally picture him doing that. Darn little bug. Okay, there's that. And let's do another one down here. And then I think we need another one here. Okay, then I'm going to grab my inside and where did my little spider go? Here he is. Let's grab the Versa Mark or the Stays On again. And I'm gonna stamp this little spider right down here in the corner, just like that. Oh, I know, I love that wreath in black. And normally when you think of a wreath, you normally think of Christmas. Now, um, I make clothespin wreaths, and I make them for all occasions. So I do have ones in black and orange, and I've got Easter ones, I've got Valentine's Day ones. So, yeah, I'm all sorts of crazy when it comes to um, different holiday wreaths. Hello, Debbie. Okay, so there is our um, cute little wreath, but in a Halloween theme. So let's get some of this stuff out of the way so we can get into, oh, you know what? I almost forgot. We need a envelope. So let's bring out our little spider again. And we're gonna go one there, one here. We're just gonna make him creeping and crawling up this little envelope. <laughs> there we go. You know what? I might actually have to do that to the inside too. Hold on. I think we need to do it because why not that's just too cute and that's very spooky we'll just do some extra little legs there we go <laughs> I love it the itsy bitsy spider okay yeah no, we're not in elementary school anymore okay so there we go 
adorable. So there is our spooky little wreath um, card for card number one. So let me get some of this stuff out of the way here. Look at all those little pumpkins. Oh, my favorite. I tell you what. See, you guys know me so well. All right, let's move some of these goodies. And now we're going to flip it up a different season here. Now we're going to go into fall. Okay? So we're going to be using the um, Fond of Autumn. Now, this is the stamp set and the dies that go with this these dies there are so many cool things that you can do with this actually this big stamp right here it actually stamps all four of these pieces separately or you can stamp them as one big one with this one right here or you can get down to the nitty-gritty and get very detailed with it stamping it out of your just cardstock so there's a lot with it you also get an acorn and a leaf to go with your um, other stamps here, the acorn, the leaf, the flower, and then this little banner right here gets cut out of this little center banner. So there is a lot of fun to be had with this set. Okay. Let me move all my stuff out of the way here. Okay, we're going to need a scrap of white. I know that's a huge scrap, but that's okay. We're going to be using it for a couple of different things here. I am also going to be bringing out... This is the Stylish Shapes dies, and I've got dies floating everywhere here. Okay, what I really just need is this one right here. Maybe if I can get it. Okay, we're going to need that. the rest of those in there and look they didn't even stay that was kind of pointless but whatever okay don't lose that we need that kept there we're going to be using some um, of our um, stamp and blends now these are the alcohol inks so these are great for blending these are way different than our stamp and write pens, which are water-based. Um, I am using this is uh, soft and light or light and dark, um, soft suede. I am using my light petal pink, and then I am using both of my oh oh I am using light evening evergreen, and that took me a second there. Hoo -hoo, uh, dark soft succulent. Okay. I'm gonna need a scrap of, uh, this is, what did I say it was? Petal Pink. Um, you're gonna need a piece, oh, this is your base. This is Soft Succulent, eight and a half by um, five and a half. Ooh, Corn Chowder and BLT, I'll be right over. <laughs> Jeez Louise. God, if I like to cook, I tell you what, I hate cooking. I really do. Now, that being said, I have to cook for my daughter because, like I said, she's on a special diet. And since she's disabled, I can't, she can't cook for herself. So I have to cook for her. So in all fairness, I guess I do cook. Um, I just don't like doing it. Let's just be honest. I, I don't have enough time in the, in the day to have to worry about cooking and making cards because... Let's be honest, I would much rather be in here making cards. Okay, then the next layer that I need is, uh, this is soft succulent. This is four by five and a quarter, and I am using the, whoops, that's not the right one. I have embossed this with the Timber 3D embossing folder. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, hopefully you made enough that you can put it in the fridge and have some for the next couple of days, right? 
Because if you're going to go through the trouble of making corn chowder, not that I, I'm pretty sure corn chowder is not really that hard, but nonetheless, if you're going to go through the trouble of making it, you're going to make enough to have for the next couple of days. Or you can freeze it. That works too, right? Okay, so this is just going to go right on top of this base. Baked potato soup. Oh my goodness, you guys, you're killing me. This is, oh. I think I need better neighbors who could cook for me. <laughs> no, um, the thing is, is, it's kind of funny because I have always said, one day I will have a cook. Yeah, right. Keep dreaming, lady. Right? <laughs> okay, so I need to use this big stamp right here. But I've said that for God knows how many years. I, I mean, I'm probably sure that my mom could even... I think she's still on here um, if she's feeling okay. Um, I've always said that I need to have a cook because I've never liked cooking. I never have. I don't think I ever will. I, I don't know. Is it something that you grow into? I don't know because <laughs> if I'm not doing it by now, then I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen, but whatever. I just, I don't enjoy it. Now, some people, they enjoy cooking and it's not like I don't have a family that wouldn't enjoy it because... You know, I've got kids and all that kind of stuff that would probably love to have homemade food, but they just have a mom that's not, not a big fan of it. Okay, I've got to shut these blinds because these bugs are starting to get crazy. Okay, so I'm going to ink up this whole big stamp right here, and I'm using the memento on this. And I don't think I'm getting enough ink, so hold on a second. I'm going to actually go in this way with it because, yep, it just wasn't working the other way. This way, if I put it on the white underneath, I can see exactly where the ink is getting. And knowing that I'm not missing any spots. Okay, let's try that. And yes, I should be using one of my um, foam uh, piercing mats underneath this, but see, yep. Hold on a minute. I gotta get a piercing mat because that did not work. I just gotta try to find one that's somewhat cleaner. Well, what I'm gonna do is see, I've got all this mess on here. I'm just gonna lay this on top of this and we're gonna try this again because that, the whole center of that leaf, see, didn't even come through. So normally you want to take a um, some kind of foam matting or something underneath now we sell these uh, piercing mats in the store to cushion your photopolymer stamps now if you're using a red rubber stamp you more than likely won't have any issues because your photopolymer already have a I mean your red rubber stamps already have the foam cushion in between the rubber and the mount and since we don't have wood stamps anymore, they they still cling to these blocks, but okay, there we go, much better. That is the look that I was going for. Okay, I also need to grab some of my um, other stamps. I need to grab the acorn and the leaf. We're gonna be using both of those. Okay, so there's the leaf, there's the acorn. And let me see, because I think we need like seven of the acorn, or maybe it's five. No, we need five of the acorn. Okay, so we're going to get to stamp in here. Okay, there's my little acorn, and here is my leaf. Now, see, thank goodness I did grab this big piece of paper, my basic white because of my boo-boo. Okay, so I'm gonna do two of these leaves, just like that. And then again, I'm gonna do five of these acorns. Now I'm leaving a gap because when I go to die cut these, I want to make sure that I'm not cutting off any of the pieces to um, my stamped image. Okay, just like that, all right. So now we can get these things out of the way so I don't stick my hand in it. 
Okay, now we're going to do some coloring to these. All right, so let's go up here to this piece. Now, the only part that I'm going to use out of this whole little florally arrangement thing is I'm only going to use this center piece here. So I'm just going to worry about coloring that. So I'm going to use my dark, or no, this is my light evening evergreen. And we're going to do some blending with these leaves right here. Okay, just like that. And then this is my light, or my dark soft succulent. Okay, that's the only ones that we're using that for. Actually, you know what? I think I needed my dark. I don't need light. I need dark evening evergreen because that didn't give me that look that I was going for. Now I'm going to use my light soft suede and I, oops, nope, I need dark soft suede first. And on my acorns, I'm going to come around here and I'm just going to do the little pieces, like the little acorn, the top, you know, the little lid thing that sits on the acorn. I don't even know what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so there's three of those on this piece here. Okay, and then all these little acorns over here. Hello, Karen. Okay, so we're just gonna do all of these. Well, I'm probably not gonna do them all because I can just do one for you and I've already done some other ones over here so we don't have to waste the whole time doing coloring okay so you can see that I've got those done um, I'm going to take the light soft suede and I'm just gonna come in here and do some blending with these and then come down here and color the actual acorn part I do want to kind of darken up some of these little marks over here, kind of bringing that color all together. Same on these. Okay, and then the little stems, I'm just going to lightly put some of this light soft suede, just like that. Okay, now I'm going to come in with the dark and do the veins of this, these bigger leaves and the two smaller leaves over here.
Okay, now let's grab our, um, this was Petal Pink. Now this will lighten up that soft suede once it starts drying over the top of those veins. Because since this is a lighter color, and like I said with the alcohol, it kind of pulls some of that color, so it kind of softens that up a little bit. that. Oh, gotta do these. Okay, so you get it on the little leaves too. So I've already die cut all these things out. Okay, so that's the colors that I chose. So we're going to take this one right here and this is what is going to cut out this whole big piece right here. But it's going to cut out this piece separately this whole piece separately and then both of these little berry pieces but like i said all we're going to use is this one so that's why i only colored that piece then the berry or the berries the uh acorns and the leaves so when we cut those out look, see there's still a little piece in there we're going to get that two leaves and look at here five acorns okay just like that and then what we're going to do is this is where we're going to get some strategies in here I'm going to use this piece here. I'm going to take momentum. Actually, I'm going to use the stays on because I want it kind of crisp. And I'm going to use the just a note. Little sentiment here. And I'm going to put that on the petal pink. Oh, I love the smell of stays on. I don't advise you to sit there and smell it for too long, but oh my gosh, it smells like, like almonds or something. It just smells so heavenly. Maybe I'm just a weirdo. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to cut this out. So there's our just a note and then I'm going to put this back in here so I don't wind up losing it. All right, so let's assemble this. So all I need is this little piece. That's why I didn't attach it first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip all these over and I'm going to grab my, my, um, no, I'm not. 
I'm not going to use those. Hold on. What do I need? I need my dimensionals. I thought I wanted them a little bit closer down, but I don't. Okay, so I'm going to actually pull off this one because I already lost the backing to it. Put that one on there. Okay, so you're going to kind of do a little bit of a dry fit for this first because it's probably the only way you're going to get it to work. So I'm going to take this and turn it and put my acorn right up here. Okay, I'm going to actually put a couple of big dimensionals on here and put this in place where I want it. Just like that. Okay. And then I'm actually going to put these down so I get this how I want it before I start putting all that glue on there. I'm putting all those glue dots on there and then really messing it up because I can't move them once I get them down there. Now all these little stems are going to go under it, but for now I'm just trying to get my placement for the moment. Okay, so since I have that, I'm going to take this one. Trying to make a circle here, but of course, when I did it earlier, it worked. But now, it's just looking a little goofy. Maybe I need to cut out another acorn, but we'll see. Because I've got to put my, my leaves on there, so maybe we can get it to work. I think this, I didn't move it over quite far enough. Let me see if I can get this up without destroying anything. Woohoo! It worked. Sweet jeebs. Okay, that's what I needed to do. That was turned crooked. Okay, I need to put this coming up here. Okay, like that. Grab this one. Ah, oh, you forgot to take a picture of the recipe. Ah, bummer deal, because I would have loved to see that recipe. That sounds amazing, and it sounds very fall weatherish. Corn chowder, yes. Okay, this little piece, the reason why I stamped kind of further over here is because this is going to get kind of tucked, or I just need to cut it because of where my um, dimensionals are. So this is going to get tucked. Whoops. Yeah, that's the right side. I'm just going to tuck this a little bit back behind there. Okay. Okay, and I did it kind of a little bit on an angle, 
I should have moved this whole thing up, but whatever. Um, it should have been all kind of moved up a little bit. It's pretty far down, but that's okay. We're going to wing it and just go with it because you guys get the idea. I'm going to be using some of the Elegant Faceted Gems. I'm grabbing these little center ones here. Grab a little one, or a big one there. A little one right there. And we'll do another big one right here. Okay, this needs to get adhered right to our card front. Okay, push all that down. Because when you've got something that's embossed, make sure it's all making contact to stay in place. And there's our little fall arrangement, kind of the little wreath thing again, but using more of like fall colors. Isn't that so pretty? I just love those colors together. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so we gotta grab our, where did I put my inside of my card? I had it, there's an envelope, nope, that's the wrong envelope. Okay, hold on. There it is, it's over here hiding underneath all my scraps. And we have an envelope. Okay, so let's see, what do we wanna put on the inside? Maybe, I stamp a couple little acorns. Where did my acorn go? Yep, we're gonna do that. And if we go ahead and stamp it in Memento, we can go ahead and color that in. I was thinking if I put another one here. Yep, we're gonna go like that. Okay. And then just quickly color this in. Oops, that's the wrong one. I need this. And I would do the same thing on the envelope and make sure you put a scrap down inside of the envelope so the ink does not uh, penetrate through the back of that envelope. Okay. So here is the envelope, and if I was to take a scrap piece of paper, or let me grab just something else I've got, I have a scrap just sitting around here. Okay, so you would take your envelope, open your envelope up, put in your scrap, make sure it goes all the way down to the bottom corner. Yes, my husband's outside barbecuing. I can smell it. Oh, it smells like heaven.
that and then pull out that scrap and then nothing went through under the back because if you have the scrap because see where some of that ink went on here that's because I had this tucked inside of there so this absorbed that instead of it going through the back of my envelope okay this needs to go in here There is card number two. So what do you guys think of that one? Isn't that kind of cool? I just love it. Love the colors, very fall. It almost reminds me of um, almost like a wedding card. That's kind of what, when I saw that, I was like, okay, that's kind of wedding-ish. So if you know somebody who's having a fall wedding, you could put a different sentiment on that and very much make it a wedding card. Congratulations. Okay, let me get some of these pens put away here. All right, and then let's get down to card number three. Now this one here, I'm going to be using some of that uh, Real red and white glitter paper. I'm going to be using the second to largest of the Condor Contour Shapes dies. But what I'm going to focus on is the Window Wishes. I love this set, but we're not going to do a window with it. We're going to do actually something a little bit different. What we're going to need from this die, we're going to need the little house. We're going to actually stamp both of these trees. So we're going to need both of the little tree die cuts, the little roof for the house, and then this tree here, and then the little dots from this uh, stamp set. Okay, our card base is uh, thick, basic white. This is eight and a half by five and a half, and I've scored this since it's our thick card stock. So folding that in half and grabbing my bone folder, we're going to burnish that down. Okay, my next layer, this is from the Celebrate Everything. Look at the back side of that. It's got all those little candies on there and some of the little hollies, amazing little colors in here would work with so many things. But I'm going to focus on this side, a little pink with the white um, and of course me and my pink. Um, I can't not make a Christmas card that is pink so we went from Halloween to fall now into Christmas okay my here I did that second um, largest contoured die and this um, is gonna go but it's going to be layered with a piece of basic black so let me tell you the measurements and I dropped my rulers so hold on a minute Ugh. This is uh, three and a quarter by four and uh, four and what is that? I can't see through this ruler. Four and three eighths. Four and five eighths, actually. Okay, that's going to go there. That's going to layer right there like that. I also grabbed a little piece of this white and I cut it down to fit inside if you look at this die, there's some polka dots in this. I did just a little bit of cutting to make it look like little peaks of snow. I cut that to fit right inside of the little polka dotty pieces there. So that's going to go on that. We need our tree. We're going to use some soft suede, some basic gray, and our polished pink because that's what this is here. I need to grab myself my scrap. So we've already got this on here, but I'm gonna use this little piece right here to do some of the stamping that I'm gonna be doing on this one. 
So we need the tree, but the tree is going to go there. Um, polished pink for my house. Okay, there's my little house. Then my, where did my roof go? I guess I didn't mount the roof. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. Okay, maybe it's not on fire. That would be bad. Okay, so there's our roof. We're going to do the roof in gray, basic gray. Okay, stamp that like that. And then we need the trees and the trees I'm going to do now and I'm talking about these trees right here the little triangle trees I'm gonna do those in uh, stays on because again I want them to be a crisp black just like that And then I will wait for this little thing because it's going to get stamped up there. So we're going to go die cut all these little pieces. Okay, so let's get... So we need the little roof. We need the two set of trees, the one set of tree and the house. And once we die cut those, we come out with all of our little pieces here. We've got our house, our roof, and our two little trees. And then we need to stamp on this. So again, doing kind of that little dry fit. I'm going to kind of see where I want my house and my, my little tree here. I want this kind of tucked behind there. So with knowing that that's going to be kind of like that, I know my tree needs to go kind of right here in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna move that, set my tree there, and know where the end of my tree needs to be. I'm gonna hold my finger right here, and then know that when I stamp this, it's gonna be exactly where I need it. Hope. <laughs> Not everything works the way that you think it's going to, but we're going to take a hope and a wish. And then I am going to take this here. It's going to go there. And now I need this little, where to go? This little, um, it's kind of like little snowflakes. I'm going to actually do the snowflakes. I was thinking I kind of wanted them in polished pink. So let's take this. Knowing that the house is going to go right there. Okay. So we're going to do some snowflakes here. Here. Now, if you can turn your stamp to give you all those little effects that you need and make them where they're going to work for you. Okay, just like that. There's my snow. Okay, now on my snow, I am going to use my stays on because you could actually, if you wanted to, you could stamp in your pink, polished pink, but you have to let it dry. So I didn't want to do that right now because it's going to just take too long and I'm not going to sit here and make you guys sit here until um, that dries. To be able to get that word to stay on there before I can touch it but if you've got time then absolutely um, 
try your different colors on your glimmer paper and see how that works for you. But stays on is going to dry the fastest, so I know that I can go ahead and do that because it is one of those inks that we use for non-porous um, for non-porous uh, stamping. Okay, so I'm going to take my Merry Wishes. Stamp it right down here. And be careful when you stamp because this paper is a little bit slick and shimmery that sometimes if you're holding at an angle it might slide on it and then it'll just wind up gooping it all up and then it kind of just ruins your whole thing so that's not what you want to go for okay let me grab my other tree okay let's get these all adhered on Oh, I didn't tell you guys the journey on our new house, or it's not new, but on the house that we're going to be moving into. It's actually my grandparents' house that we're moving into. Um, so we had the uh, carpet inspectors come up and they measured and they did all the things um, so we could get the carpet laid. While we were anticipating in our minds, we knew the price of the carpet that we wanted. We knew um, roughly the square footage of the house, but they just have to come and they have to measure and whatever. So we had kind of in our mind a idea of what the carpet was going to cost and it's supposed to be free insulation and blah, 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 blah. Um, they uh, went up there. My husband met the guy who measures and everything met him up there got the measurements done we get a message uh letting us know that you know this is what they came up with and both of us like our jaws hit the floor like something is wrong they had to have measured or they gave us the wrong house because i know for darn sure that house is not that big because our house now that we live in is a four bedroom and we're moving to a two bedroom um, with kind of a little add on to it. But either way, they came back with, I was thinking, okay, if you measured a, if it's four, um, four dollars for the car, four dollars per square foot for the carpet. And if you think of it as the fact that, okay, even if I go at a thousand square feet, that's around four grand, right? And then you have to pay taxes and then you have to pay for the padding and all that. So I was like, even on the high side, I was thinking, okay, this is going to probably cost roughly around maybe, you know, eight grand. Well, they came back with an estimate of almost $15,000 for carpet. That's just for carpet. And I was appalled. I was like, um, something is wrong here because there's no way in the world I am going to pay that kind of money for carpet. <laughs> so now we're kind of at a halt because we've got to now go price things around, find out what is really happening and why they're trying to charge us that amount of money for carpet so that is where we're kind of at on moving because i know you guys have been you know trying to find out where we are well that's it we're kind of nowhere in the time being okay so i'm just going to pop up this little house so i think i need my little tweezers here so I can make sure I put this right on this house, covering that a little bit. Okay, just like that. Now this little tree, I'm gonna put directly down. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on that. With these little tiny pieces, it's kind of hard to hang on to and uh, be able to put them in place 
So a good pair of tweezers is always kind of a nice thing to have on hand. Okay, and that's gonna go there. And then these two little trees right here are going to get placed right here. Okay, this is gonna get glued right down. Then I need to figure out what I'm going to do as far as putting some little shimmers on here. I should have thought about that before I... Okay, we gotta find something. Ooh, those are cute. Those are probably going to be... I know they're not pink, but they might just work for what we need here. Because those are just too pink. Uh, nope. Nope. Ooh, we have snowflakes. Ooh, we're gonna go with that. Let's use those, because I haven't even used those yet. We're gonna do some of these adhesive back stars. I forgot that I even bought these. You know what else would be kind of pretty? You could even use some of these, um, the glossy dots. Those would be pretty too with that. But we're gonna go with these, because like I said, I haven't used them. So I'm going to put one kind of come down right there. Let's use one of these big ones. Right over here. Let's do another little one. Right there. And I think I actually need to put Nope, I'm gonna leave it alone. So there is our third card. Now for the inside of this, um, I think I would probably just leave it blank because at that point you could stamp your sentiment if you want to do this as a, um, you know, a Christmas card or if you're gonna go with more of like a winter wishes card, that kind of thing, then you can stamp your uh, little snow coming down onto your sentiment. That would be pretty cute. But you know what, actually we do. I'm gonna stamp a tree. Nope, I changed my mind. We need a tree in here. Because it's awfully bare and even if you were to just put a this right there and then hold on to your britches we're not done where are my other trees they were just sitting here you guys see my stamp with my, oh see because i moved them way over here so we're going to do the same thing on the envelope so let's stamp that tree again paper right there and I'll grab my stays on and grab my two little trees here take this one off Stamp those right there. Oops. There we go. Okay, and then where did my 
hard go. Just like that. Okay, so there is our inside. That's when you could actually add some of your little pink snow to the inside coming down on your little tree there to bring some of that color to the inside. So let me get some of this out of the way so I can bring all of these cards in to show you. So if you are local to me here in Tucson, Arizona, I actually have a in person class that I do. I do it twice a month. It is the same class for both of those days. So I do it the second Sunday of the month and the third Thursday of the month. And we feature three cards. And uh, you can check my events page here if you are local and you would like to come and join us with that um, for that class. It is lots of fun. We love getting together. We do it up here at the local VFW. So there's food and there's drinks and all sorts of fun stuff. Okay, so there is card number one, card number two, and then our fun little fall card number three. So what do you guys think of these adorable cards? I hope you guys give this a try. Again, like, comment, and share. Um, this will be the share card, this is the comment card, and this is the like card. So know that all three of those things will get you entered to, you know, the drawing of all three of these cards. I love to mail these out as gifts for you because what better way of having cards in your hands to be able to copy um, or case them, uh, you might say, um, what, besides having them in your hands. And you can tweak them and you can change colors. You know, when you have them, you have the layout and you have the design to be able to have fun with. So thank you so much for sticking with me tonight. Like I said, you're going to find all the dimensions, still photos, um, the project sheets, the shopping list, everything over on my blog. It will probably not be up until tomorrow morning because it's taking forever for YouTube and my internet to upload my videos. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me and you guys have a great rest of your week. I will be on um, Thursday over a lot live on YouTube on Thursday. Um, that would be the sixth. I'm live there every Thursday. Um, I do my coffee and cards and that is at noon uh, Pacific time. So wherever you're at, you can, you know, do the calculations of what time it would be for you. And make sure you're logged into your YouTube so you can come in and comment and let me know that you're watching me. All right, you guys. Have a great week. Bye-bye.